The historic name is Halleck and Macmillan. Halleck was the city's first architect and Macmillan was his partner. It was originally a cast iron facade. The, the iron was cast in San Francisco and shipped up. It was a showpiece for Halleck, who was the distributor for the cast iron from San Francisco. Halleck Macmillan building was the fashion of the time, the Greek revival look. As a cast iron fronted building, it is the only one we have of the 1850s. It's a significant building in its own way. It's a gorgeous little building. It's very modest. In contrast to its cast iron neighbor that I own, built in the 1880s, if you see the buildings side by side, you'll see the evolution of cast iron from the beginning of the Victorian age to the end of it. The chance to restore the oldest commercial building in the city, the predated Oregon statehood, it just has to be done and has to be done right. Doing it right meant putting together a team of craftsmen dedicated to restoring the Halleck and Macmillan building to its original 1857 cast iron glory using methods and materials common to the times. For preservation architect, author, and cast iron expert Bill Hawkins, the craft of recreating history starts with an eye for detail, a pencil, and a piece of paper. This was the Halleck and Macmillan ironwork, taken off of photographs, blown up, and uh, this is the detail that was on it. And then it becomes a piece of carving, a wood carving, in the round full size. Then it is this piece, it's small enough, that can go into the sand, the pattern is pressed in there, and the sand hardened around it, and uh, it comes out iron. We are looking at the two halves, top and bottom, of the pilaster patterns, and this is uh, the two halves of the pattern itself, the face of the thing and the back of it, the cope and the drag. At Architectural no, Castings, cast owner Dave Talbot shows John and the team from Emmerich Architects and Bremick Construction the sand moldings of the design elements that will eventually be cast in iron and adorn the facade of the restored building. These leaves are pretty standard as far as this type of acanthus leaf, which people wouldn't recognize as the one, but in fact it is. Sculptor Steve Pancoast carved wood patterns for the pieces that will be cast. This side of the shield actually sits flat on the surface. Mm -hmm. Now this side is more of an inset frame. If you see that lip right there, yeah. which is always great for a shadow, but mm -hmm. this is emerging from underneath the, the mm -hmm. uh, protector perimeter. Right. So it's two different looks, and both mm -hmm. of them are, are totally correct. It is absolutely gorgeous. Both halves, whatever, it's just spectacular. I just, uh, I'm thrilled with it. First time I've seen this, obviously. Technology has changed, and you would think that we'd be using fiberglass or reinforced concrete or combinations thereof and figured out that the original technology of cast iron was in fact the best material of all. You don't have too many circumstances where something that was done in 1857 is still the best material, but it is. The Silverton Foundry is believed to be one of the last of Oregon's coke-fired iron foundries. This is the place where the sand-cast molds of the Halleck and Macmillan building's decorative elements will be transformed into cast iron masterpieces. The furnace is heated to 2,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Engine blocks and scrap iron are melted down. And the pour begins. The process can't be rushed, but the end result is well worth the wait. In its final state, it will be a magnificent building on the inside with brick walls, beadboard ceiling, exactly the way it looked uh, when it was new. And I've only recently come up with some sort of a metaphor to explain, at least to me, why we should care. 
And I've asked people, if, if you didn't know who your parents were, who your grandparents were, who your great-grandparents were, for better or for worse, your life would be different. You wouldn't have a grounding about what you want to do, what you don't want to do. Uh, and I think, uh, I think that's what historic districts do nationwide. The fact that someone has adopted it and uh, will love the building and do it properly is absolutely pivotal. And that has been the case with many of our landmark buildings in the city. They're labors of love, really, not a way to make a living. All of the buildings that I've developed, whether I developed them new in the case of Pac West, redeveloped them in the case of 200 Market, or restored them in the case of my historic buildings, they're all potential landmark buildings. That's the contribution I hope to make to the city.